Hello, good evening everybody. Welcome at this Palestine talk at MOVE Festival. Palestine is a, a country, a country, yes, that is very dear uh, to MOVE Festival. Um, it's, uh, we have a lot of uh, films that have featured on um, Palestine over the last years. And at uh, this festival, we also have the privilege of having um, two Palestinian films, Gaza Mon Amour and 200 Meters. And we will talk tonight um, with two experts in Palestinian uh, cinema. Uh, firstly, I would like to introduce Hannah, Hannah Atala. Hello, Hannah. Hello, Rizid. Nice to talk to you from uh, Ramallah. <laughs> yeah, for, yes. This year, unfortunately, not live, but uh, it's a, a pleasure to have you with us again at MOVE because um, we're, there's a long uh, connection between MOVE and you. Hannah, you are, um, I think, one of the most prominent persons in the Palestinian film industry, if we can call it this way. We'll talk about is it an industry or not later, but um, you're a director, a film director, and also the, the director of uh, Palestine Film Days and Film Lab. So um, also very important, I think, to to bring films to Palestine, but also to bring Palestinian films to the world. So it's a, a pleasure to have you here with us tonight. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And thanks for more for this invitation to talk. And as, as you said, for, for me, MOVE one of the most close festival to me. Uh, and yeah, I hope next time we will be there with you. Yes, definitely. Uh, that's what we hope to. <laughs> and um, our other guest is Amin, Amin Naidve. Amin, it's a, a pleasure also to have you here with us tonight. The pleasure is mine. Hello. <laughs> You're talking to us from... Uh, Palestine also, from uh, a place between Ramallah and Tulkara. <coughs> and um, you're um, very attached, of course, to um, Palestine, the land, the troubles. Um, you've uh, also focused very much on that in 200 meters, your first feature, and we're really happy to, to show that feature in, during the festival. Yeah, it's, uh, I'm very happy also to, <coughs> to screen my film in Belgium because also <clears throat> Sorry, my director of photography is from Belgium. Okay, yeah. that's so. a nice link. <laughs> so uh, the, uh, the links between Palestine and Belgium are strong. Yes, of course. <laughs> so yes, it's, it's lovely to have you both with us tonight to also talk about the film 200 Meters um, that um, is, is a very interesting film. I've had the pleasure of seeing it. And we'll also talk about uh, Palestinian cinema. And maybe just as a starter um, to talk about that first uh, topic, Hannah, it might be nice maybe to, to take us a little bit back in Palestinian cinema. Like, what does it mean for you um, as, as somebody who has been involved in the Palestinian film industry for such a long time? What is special about Palestinian cinema? Yeah, I, I can say quickly that the, the, the special that um, we're producing films. <laughs> so back back to, you know, Palestinian use, use cinema to tell our stories and to keep our narrative alive in uh, front of a lot of uh, others who try to, to, to disturb, let's put it like this, uh, our our narratives. So from that time when the filmmakers or Palestinian filmmakers they become use the cinema as as a medium and use the cinema language to, to tell the story. The Palestinian cinema went for uh, different um, levels from the time of uh, PLO when we were more documenting what's happening mm -hmm. during the, the, the 48, the Nakba, and then 67, and then the diaspora refugee camps outside, inside. And then how it's moved when Michel Echlefe did his first feature film, and then tell the, the new, new generation. So this, uh, 
journey with how we 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 develop let's put the the, the narrative uh, it's make uh, it's make us as as i said before to tell more and more to keep our narrative there and to to keep more and more our stories which i feel uh, uh, we we need it, and this is part of our uh, resistance, and this is part mm -hmm. of our 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 life. Uh, in let's say, kind of like every year, we have a Palestinian film in big festivals. Mm -hmm. Every year, we have really one filmmaker manage or two. They manage to even to be all over, like you know, like now I mean with two hundred with with two hundred. Uh, meter to 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 give to give a people different story than the stereotype to, to mm -hmm. give a people different story than what they see on in news and depend on each channel agenda and each channel uh, how they want to present us or in which image they want they want to to put with us in the same time i feel lately we become out from the stereotype that if we become as a Palestinian victims or we are heroes. So now mm -hmm. there is like more uh, human uh, stories. Now there is like daily stories uh, coming out from Palestine which can attach to, to the world and uh, uh, normal uh, audience more and more than when we were before more mm -hmm. just um, using more slogans let's 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 put it let's put it like this so yeah. the palestinian cinema it's uh, it's there from long time uh, present uh, stories in a good quality uh, but in on, on the ground it's it's another story and maybe we can talk, yeah. talk about uh, later yeah. I mean, maybe uh, just to talk about the generations, you are a part, of course, of that uh, current generation of Palestinian filmmakers. Um, can you maybe tell us a little bit how you entered the scene? And also, um, I presume there is a connection between Hannah and you, what the connection is, like how um, you ended up uh, meeting each other. Uh, well, how I came into the filmmaking scene, it, I, I will go back to my to me growing up in the second intifada. I was uh, still a kid, and you know witnessing uh, what was happening back then, and having to spend uh, lots of like uh, months in the house because there were no curfews. I had the chance to watch many movies with my brother. <laughs> he was a he was a fan, you know, and and he started to find that there are other films than American films. So we started to, I don't know, to get introduced to different uh, storytellers. And uh, I was like, OK, this is interesting. You know, I want to do this. And, but of course, I went with, uh, I had a special war with my, with my parents, you know, like filmmaking, what do you want to do? How do you want to make your living? Where do you want to study even, you know? Back then, they, we did not have even a school, like a film school in Palestine. Yeah. So yeah, it was a, it was really like a long, <laughs> another another story. Yeah. And uh, me and Hanna, I don't, I think uh, I first met Hanna. He visited our film school. He was friends with some of our uh, instructors, our teachers. But then, uh, well, I I met him in Ramallah. We of course we are a small community, you know. But uh, the, my spell story with Hanna is that you know I was struggle, struggling struggling. Uh, uh, for a, for a while, trying to find uh, you know any potential investor or producer or anything, you know, I have been writing for three years, and we went to one of like the biggest or like one uh, important workshop, uh, IAVE, the European Audiovisual Entrepreneurs, and you know we felt me and my producer my audio that we, you know we have a project, but no, but like. We are knocking on like uh, many doors, but there is no answer. And then it was the Palestine cinema days. I was there at the opening in Ramallah, and I met Hanna. And I tell him, you know, I'm complaining. I'm telling him, you made it, uh, 
you made the, this festival at the same time of like the olive harvest. I have to go pick cards with my father. And he said, I mean, we make these events for you. Come on, stay. So I stayed. And then the next day I went to a talk, to a master class, and they, they had invited a guy who used to work for Venice at the time. For, and he was talking about how to promote your short film, etc. At the end, he mentioned a program in Torino. It was called Oltricorto, like from after the short. And if you have a short film and you are writing a feature film, they invite you to, to present it and to talk to producers who are there. And I did this, you know. So this is like a special connection. <laughs> I did this, and that was where I met my Italian co-producer, and that's how everything changed. Yeah. Mm. That's a, a nice story. It's also showing how, how much time sometimes you need for films to, to mature or to find the right tracks to really get started. Maybe going back to Hannah, I asked you what is special about Palestinian cinema. You could talk, of course, for hours about Palestinian cinema. But I also want to ask you what is special about Palestinian film days. Like, what do you try to do in setting up this festival? Yeah, the, the, the festival idea came from Film Lab Palestine, the organization under the component which called Cinema Culture. So as, as Amin mentioned before, we are coming from uh, a culture or history that first of all, we don't, we don't have a cinema theaters. Most of us, we grow up in, in a way of, we receive images through TV. And in a time of, uh, let's say, 80s, we have, I think, I remember one channel, which is on Jordan, Jordan uh, TV. So from there, we begin receive images. But then we, we, we have a chance to, to, to meet, uh, or when we have the chance to know about cinema and about this magic, which called film, uh, we we felt that we need to to uh, develop the cinema culture in Palestine and to bring people back to watch uh, films, and it's not not commercial. Films. Yeah. It's independent films, art house movies, really films with a, a, a cinematic language. Uh, no more about others' stories. Take us from their world, you know. So from, from this angle, we thought, okay, we need to begin like, it's, it's, it's begin like, like event, like let's put it like a film week. And then every year we add something, every year we become bigger. Every year, mm -hmm. for example, first year we don't have competition and then we have a, only competition for short films or documentary from Palestine or about Palestine. And then we add a production award uh, to, to support short film to, to produce. And then we say, OK, why we don't begin invite professionals to come to Palestine for two reasons. First, to, to see the reality, to see from where we are. So when I bring my script and go to, to Europe to tell about the wall, checkpoints, what's this mean? If you are not really see it, you will not get it. So we, we create the PFM, the PFM Palestine Film Meeting, which is like the industry days. And where, where I mean, met uh, the Torino, yeah. Mm. And others from others, and where we invite from Move Mark many times to come as a distributor first and director of festival to meet people and to select films and to make all this networking and exchange because this is part of how you will you will meet people because mm -hmm. in the same time especially young filmmakers it's not easy to travel to 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 attend festivals and even if you travel with big festivals it's a huge you know to go for example to venice or berlin or Cannes. it's not easy to say okay i have a i have a project and i want to go to find the co-producer even when you apply for a special programs it's a huge competition 
So we thought to make it more focused, mm -hmm. more cozy, more people can really chit chat quickly, have a drink, uh, just walk together. So we thought in this way we can uh, support more. And during the festival, there is many stories, like when people, their project begin from it, from the industry days or from the, the festival itself. And we, we managed to, to build audience. And this mm -hmm. is for, for us the most important. I remember we begin 2014. In the opening, I think we have only 300 people, something like this, 400 people. This is the opening night, you know? Mm -hmm. And last, last year, uh, not, not last year because the Corona, it was like a special edition. The year before, we had the premiere for Elias Sliman. Uh, Elias Sliman film. Yeah. We have around 1,200 uh, yeah. people who was, we opened two, two venues to, to screen the film. Mm -hmm. So you see like really it's, it, there, is, yeah. there is audience and we are building audience. And this is important when we are talking about industry and about distribution, because in the end, we need people who really goes to the cinemas and buy tickets and watch the films so this money can go back you know the circle of of production mm -hmm. and more and more we need uh, uh, cinema theaters when you have more audience who want to see films maybe this will make uh, private sectors investors more convinced to invest in cinema theaters mm -hmm. not only in in malls or in cars or in yeah, <laughs> got your consuming, point. Consuming yeah. Uh, products. Yeah. So yeah, so this is from where the festival uh, idea comes. Yeah, it's brilliant, and um, it's very important, I guess, also for this uh, new generation of filmmakers. I mean, I guess that for you also, um, it was a long uh, trajectory making 200 meter. Was that also due to the fact that there's little support and of course you already said told a bit about the crossing and about the the first short you made before or simultaneously if i get it right with making the feature but how how did you enter the scene with let's say limited support as a young filmmaker yes actually i think i had two two like two major uh, obstacles yeah. the first one the first one is the lack of support which is uh, you know we don't have a national film fund. No. Uh, like, uh, if you take the example of like the Israeli film fund and like how many films they produce every year, yeah. it's very sad. It's really very sad. And I think I, I discovered this when I was in the Berlin Alley for the first time in my life. I walked, I walked into the film market, and I went to the Israeli film booth. I was like, oh my god, yeah. you know. And we don't exist. So you know this, uh, yeah, that is very sad. But then the other obstacle is that the uh, Palestinian filmmakers, you know, Palestinian cinema, had already put the standards very high. Yeah. So to, to, you know, to make a feature film, you have to uh, fulfill certain requirements. I don't know. So I had, uh, when, I, when I had the story of 200 meters uh, seven, eight years ago, I was still a fresh to it. I believe that this, this could really become something. I thought it wouldn't take time. I thought maybe take one year, maybe two years, you know. But of course, it was a different uh, reality. And uh, so, what I was facing, as I say, as I said, is that the first thing, you know, there is no money in Palestine, and in the Arab world, uh, everybody is competing on two or three funds. So it's also, even if you get this money, it is not enough, you know? So you have to, to go to co-production, to, to co-production markets. And as, as a first time director, you know, yeah. uh, that was a very, it was a struggle. And that's why we made the crossing. We made the crossing because I needed to, and it was, it was uh, finally, it was the answer. Because I needed somehow to have a visual, uh, uh, I don't know, like uh, identify, yeah. yeah, like what I'm going to do, 
and uh, also to maybe share the theme of how I wanted to approach the story. Mm. Because also The Crossing talks about the wall and about separation. Yeah. So, yeah, that's more or less my... Uh, <laughs> yeah, we, we need to talk about the film itself and also about the team. But there was one um, other issue I wanted to address because, of course, 200 Meter is um, a road movie, let's say, um, um, really focusing on the, on the wall, the separation wall and how it separates families and, of course, also a collective experience lived by an individual. But I wanted to ask you also um, about another obstacle, namely, how do you go about filming in a place that is occupied and where there's so many military and other obstacles. I guess it must have been quite difficult to shoot a film in Palestine. Yes, so um, the difficulties of shooting. So <laughs> uh, we shot the film in 22 days and we had uh, 35 wow. locations. And uh, most of the locations that are in the uh, like proximities or like uh, that, that are close to the wall or to checkpoint because we used the actual real locations. Yeah. In my mind, while writing, I was telling my producer, you know, I, uh, you know, I want this scene and I want this scene. She and she is telling me, you know, just write what you are imagining and we will see. And then when we came to the production, uh, we don't have, of course. I, I, I was uh, daydreaming that we can build, you know, so so it is more safe for the for everyone. But then I realized that we cannot build what I want, mm -hmm. and we have to use the the actual locations, real locations. Wow. And you know it is like uh, no way that you can get the permit to shoot there. <laughs> so yeah, we like we had a plan, made plans to be fast and to be like with smaller units, and just to, like a guerrilla filmmaking. This is how we worked in these areas, but still like. Most of the areas where we where we were shooting, which is considered Area C, yeah. you know, it is uh, under the military control, Israeli military control. So there was always I always was was worried, you know. I never felt that uh, I was uh, filming with like uh, I don't know, just like there was security for the mm -hmm. team and for everyone. So there was always this, this adrenaline which I think also reflected in the film itself. Yes, very much. So, yeah. uh, maybe I would like, to, before we enter into the topic of the film, uh, Hannah, I would like to uh, ask you about guerrilla filmmaking. It's um, an interesting word that I mean just used. I guess this must be familiar to you, knowing the different generations of Palestinian filmmaking. Is this like a, a common problem, like overcoming these obstacles, the physical and military obstacles? also through having to be really creative in filming? Yeah, yeah, totally. And it's, it's exactly as, as I mean said, you know, just to, from Oslo time, we have so the 90s zone where we can move for freely. But 90% 90, 90 from the area of, of Palestine, it's under the military uh, authority. And if you are working with low or mid budget, film, film budget, you cannot really like uh, build uh, uh, this kind of uh, wall or checkpoints or fence. And you have all this extra who's like acting, like crossing. And then you can put your character in the middle and take 10 shots, tell you what, tell you take the, the right atmosphere forget it, then we will not produce mm. films. And we, no, no, any of Palestinian films will, will happen. So most, most of it, we, we call it like we stole the, the, the shots, you know, <laughs> like uh, we just uh, imitate, like, you know, sometimes we use, the crew use, it's like we are a press uh, with really small, small units, and then you can follow a little bit your character from here, from there. And I know even some, some films, they make it uh, over one, two days to, to manage to have like one, one sequence. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so wow. because that, it's not in an easy way to, to, to film in, in Palestine when you have this kind of situation, which is out from your hand and no way that you can take permissions. Yeah. 
And in the same time, you are not like, you don't have this studio that you can go there and build your uh, decor with all these mm. precise props and, uh, and you have all this extra to, to, um, to, get, to get what you want. So yeah. there is a lot, a lot of ways uh, that uh, Palestinian filmmakers or the production team or production design who can use stuff which I think and once with friends uh, discussion if you bring them to work here in Palestine in this kind of situation it's not easy for them because mm -hmm. you know they happen to work on more comfortable situation and more like uh, good production uh, but if you want to put them in to, to produce film which maybe need four to five weeks and you tell them sorry guys we only have 20 days we need we need to finish yeah. then it's a i think i think that the the production school in palestine because i can call it it's like really school you can you can teach it <laughs> it's it's uh, it's uh, special yeah so to say so, the yeah. least so, and a lot a lot of the stories it's it's like um, yeah we can give we can give like uh, examples mm -hmm the same in the same situation yes and now we only talked about the west bank and not about gaza but um, maybe first uh, focusing on on the film on 200 meters uh, i mean i was overwhelmed by the film i i was in palestine in 2002 when they first started building the wall so i'm i'm very kind of uh, touched by the subject um, and I, I think it's it's an amazing film that really touches on on what separation is but it's it also gives, a, as I said before, a really kind of collective experience in a way which is like so overpowering because you use little words to really share that, that experience, which of course is also your experience. So can you maybe tell us a little bit more about what you wanted to convey and how you, you came about making this feature film? Uh, well, as you said, uh, it started as a because I maybe I chose to make this as my first film because it is coming from a personal uh, story also. As the wall was being built, I suddenly was not allowed to be with my family, who are on the other side of the wall. That's where I had my most uh, beautiful memories of my childhood, you know. And then yeah, it's not an option anymore. Uh, so you know, this uh, kept on building up inside of me. And when I had the chance, when I studied filmmaking and I had the chance to speak or to make my art, I chose to tell this story. But like when I, when I started writing, when I started talking about it, uh, in my mind, so I, I wanted to know, I wanted to make a genre film. Mm -hmm. I, I wanted to really to, to tell the story, but at the same time to, make, to, to, to produce an entertaining film that yeah. uh, could be uh, enjoyed. And I was uh, I was uh, kind of lost between the like, you know technical writing and like how to make it like a genre film, and I I really didn't have the the most important thing which is the the family theme also like I knew I, I like the, the title is the same the distance is the same everything was the same but I had to go through uh, well I had to grow up to, <laughs> what to have your own road trip. Exactly, like because the road trip wouldn't wouldn't uh, have meaning if if we did not connect with the with the family. So the story of the film is the story of a man who is from the West Bank, uh, who is married to a Palestinian wo woman who lives on the other side of the wall, on a Palestinian village, but now on the Israeli controlled part, and they are two hundred meters apart. And this is a story of many 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 yeah. families. And uh, so, I, in the in the first uh, part of the film, I introduced this universe, and uh, what is like, how is this person adapting to the situation? And then at some point, he his son is in the hospital, and a man wants to be with his son in the hospital. This is it. Yeah. That's it. And he has to go through a, a, a roller coaster of events to finally to finally make it. 
Yes. Like I did. <laughs> <laughs> like you did, indeed. <laughs> and um, what is also interesting, when people discuss Palestine, the word that often comes up is resistance. Uh, resistance in the sense, let's not say the, the Mukawama resistance, but more the resistance right. of people pushing back, fighting, living in dignity, the whole aspect of sumut, um, tenacity. And your main character, of course, also conveys that kind of resistance, but in a very non, like in a very non-Palestinian way. It's very universal and very, not that Palestine is not universal, but it's very kind of, without a political message, you see that it is super political. So I wanted to, to hear more about how you, you made that character. So I, uh, well, many many people tell me that he that he reminds them of me. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> yeah, so I'm very happy, you know. But yeah. uh, I don't know. In my mind, uh, when I was writing, when I was creating the Mustafa character, uh, I was uh, you know, I was projecting many many people, many things on this person. I don't know. Maybe it was like a dream of like how mm -hmm. how, do, how do how do I imagine a hero of of for me for me personally, you know, someone that I really can appreciate how he's you know uh, reacting to how he lives such a difficult situation, and uh, yeah, that's uh, Mustafa. <laughs> I wanted to say something, but I just lost the the the, the idea. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Hannah, well, maybe uh, you wanted to say something about 200 meters. Maybe it's nice also to, to hear your opinion or thoughts. You don't have to give a review of the film, but I, no, I'm I think, interested. I think, as, as, I told you, as I told you before, I think that uh, the, the narrative of, of, Palestinian, of, of Palestinian cinema, it's becoming more out of this yeah. kind of slogans, which is... Lately, I'm really, really happy that we become uh, talking in a way, of course, Palestine universal, but we, we become using the, the universal language, the cinema universal yeah. language, like, like others, you know, like, like other, other, other countries. And, and here where you find more people attached and where, where more people really under, understand. It's, it's, as, as you said, when we use resistance, it's not mean that resistance of, of we want to live yeah. and we want to have a normal life. We want to, 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 to live, to, to, to go when, when the kids in hospital, the father have the right to be next next to the to the kids so in 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 this in this way it's become more um more rich let's put in the, the, the mm -hmm. film more more reaching uh, more more audience so and this is what what i think i mean i mean managed to do yeah. even though the film if if you want to to talk about checkpoints or walls there is a lot of films about checkpoints about wall, uh, a lot of uh, TV reports, uh, a lot of things in the news. But here, here the, 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 the issue, which kind of story you want to tell. Yeah. In the end, it's about the story. And in the end, how much you're honest and how much your story coming from, from inside. And this is what I mean uh, when I listen to his interviews in, in different places, how much he was keep repeating that, how much the story it's coming from personal experience. And this is what I think the, the, the words you feel the cinema uh, sensitive come if really it's attached to you. And if it's really, it's a personal issue more than I'm sitting as a director and I'm giving a lecture, you know? <laughs> and this is, this is really where, where, I mean, manage, not, not manage, it's uh, maybe wrong to use manage. It's, it's his story. Yeah. It's his own inside story because that it's become out in uh, honest. Yeah, this is the word I want, honest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, would, I would like to uh, say something more. Like, uh, I, I really appreciate what Hannah said now. 
that uh, it is coming from a personal story. And when he said that uh, some you know, like it's not a story that where a director is picturing about something or like is okay, I will tell you. Because I was between this and this at some point, you mm-hmm. know. I wanted to tell the personal story, but also I was, uh, I wanted to to discuss or to put many political, uh, to dis- to put the finger on many things. Yeah. But as I was writing, uh, the good thing is that I was always listening. You know, I was uh, I was uh, taking like uh, accepting lots of like feedback, and that, like uh, day by day, draft after draft, I was losing the lecturing part. I I discovered that okay, the story itself, you know, a man is not is <laughs> enough. It's a man wants to go to his son. That's it. Mm-hmm. You don't need more than that. So I kept the personal, and I. As Hannah said again, you know, slogans, we don't need it anymore, you know. We are done with slogans. We are. We really need to reach uh, with personal stories. Yeah, and of course the fact that so many Palestinian directors manage to tell Palestine, to narrate Palestine in film or in books or Palestine has for a long time been owned by other people talking about Palestine, but now it seems like it's it's there, like there's such a rich language that that indeed it creates obstacles because the barrier is high, because there are so many good films and artistic practices out, but at the same time you can speak a, a language that people just understand. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to ask you also about Gaza because I'm I'm very attached to Gaza and I was happy, uh, Hannah, that Gaza was um, a topic, a place uh, addressed also in Move with Gaza Mon Amour. Like maybe both of you, like how how do you feel about Gaza and films? Because the the film that was selected for Move is um, is also talking about separation, of course, um, not directly the blockade, but also people living in in very um, undignified circumstances. Um, Maybe just the place of Gaza in in Palestinian cinema. I know it's a big question, Hannah, but um, why is this important that it's selected now, this film? I think think Gaza, it's a a really special place all over the world, you know? It's um, how much we we can talk about Gaza, uh, we cannot really give the, the real meaning uh, about uh, living there. And especially now with all this Palestinian political issue plus Palestinian Israelis. So I, I to, to be honest, I don't have that experience about Gaza because in, in a time that from long, long time, I visit Gaza, and then we are not allowed to mm. to, to enter. But we have we have friends from Gaza. We we talk from time to time, or from a Palestinian who's original from Gaza but living in in West Bank. That that you can you can tell. It's a place which is like the most uh, uh, rich place with the stories. Every single hour, there is a story there. So uh, I think I think still we need more from Gaza. Yeah. I mean, if if you want to tell about if the Palestinian cinema covering Gaza or or we have enough stories from Gaza, I will tell you not at all. I hope the uh, uh, filmmakers from Gaza can produce more and more, like you know Arab and Tarazan and other filmmakers, uh, and there is really great talented filmmakers, young filmmakers there who produce short films, documentary film, and sometimes like uh, video art mm-hmm. coming out out from there. Uh, yeah, I, I think um, still still need need more to tell, especially, as I said, more about uh, all these problems, uh, yeah. When it's this kind of, I don't know how to, how to call it because, uh, <laughs> not yeah, not not only Palestinian Israeli issue and plus yeah. Palestinian Palestinian issue and it's become more and more heavy on 
on the normal uh, or on the people, yeah. on, the, on the daily life, yeah. you know. Yeah, that so, also yeah. struck me in the film and also in, in Amin's film in 200 meters that there was a lot of like internal criticism. In Gaza, Mon Amour, there was criticism on the de facto authorities in the Gaza Strip. And also, I mean, in your film, what's, what is really, I think, so rich is that it's multivocal. Like there's so many layers to it and there's so many voices. But then at a certain moment, you also criticize the the aberrant behavior, let's say, of gangs near the wall. So I also thought that it was interesting that you, that you wanted to show the reality and, of course, it, it's multifaceted way. Exactly. I think this is what also is giving the film this uh, maybe value because it is very truthful, you know. I'm not uh, yeah. hiding what I don't want you to know. No, I'm, I'm telling, telling you the story without any uh, censorship, yeah. you know. So... <laughs> That's lovely. Uh, I don't know if you have any concluding remarks or thoughts to finish, or maybe something about a new project, or maybe you just want to enjoy the the, the, the current project and 200 meters. Well, I'm uh, I am developing uh, my next project. Still, I uh, finished the treatment, but uh, it is still not so clear, so that I can talk about it. Okay. But uh, hopefully. Hopefully, like uh, by the end of this year, it will become more uh, like a, a more uh, real, uh, real project. Yes, mm -hmm. that's great. <laughs> Hannah, yeah. do you want to uh, finish with a concluding thought? No, I I think uh, I wish that we have a one day that we have our own uh, more, 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 more like or or our build or develop like a real cinema industry here here in Palestine mm -hmm. that we will not keep going on the same problems <laughs> every time we want we want to to produce film and yeah we we begin work work on that and i hope um, next year we will meet in move and we can tell that different story about these difficulties that at least we will manage to solve part part of it. <laughs> yeah, that's a lovely um, wish. And uh, Palestinians can <laughs> overcome a lot. And you see through the diversity of the films that despite everything what is going on, there's like an abundant scene. So imagine if there was a strong industry. I mean, that would be yeah. mind blowing. But it's it's already, I think, fantastic, the, the work that you both are doing and a lot of the the filmmakers of course because uh, we didn't address the rich cinematic scene but um in its entirety but um i would definitely like to to ask the viewers of the of the festival to to watch the two palestinian films that um that are being screened and um i wish you both all the best in in what you're doing your projects and indeed let's meet next year in belgium properly or in palestine yeah, you're most welcome. <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> and maybe thank pick you. some olives and watch some nice movies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Brigitte, and thanks for, for MOVE, for the whole team, for, for this uh, talk. And uh, wish you all the best in your edition this year for the festival. So thank you. You're welcome. We're making the best out of it. Thanks a yeah. lot and um, all the best. Talk Thank to you, you soon. Bye-bye. Ciao, bye-bye.